The flaw in Pat's stone is how people tie it. Uh, the design's good. The profile projected to the trout is excellent. It gives the impression of a, of a stone fly, but it's also easy to tie and a quick tie. And it's easy to weight and keep the profile. But what happens is people use full strength or full thickness legging material. And that leads to very stiff legs, as you see in this web search of Pat Stone fly patterns. Um, most of these have very stiff legs. And what I find is you have to split the legging material to make very thin legs so you get a much better action on the fly. Today we're comparing the flexibility of legging materials for Pat Stone and other stone fly patterns like the uh, long leg stone that I tie. The first one we're going to look at is this barred sexy floss amber and this is the small diameter material. So what we what I want to show is is that in when you put it out in long pieces it looks pretty flexible. If you tie it long it's going to be pretty flexible. The thing is is on on the fly, you're actually using relatively short pieces like this, and it's not very flexible. Let's look at the fly itself. Here, and you can see that the legs stick straight out. And then we're going to do a tank test on this to uh, see how flexible it is in a bottom bouncing situation. The legging material is made of these uniflex and flexi floss and uh, super floss style of legging or what I find is are splittable. Um, I'm going to show you how they split here in a second, but uh, these ones seem to take on a fibrous character when they're extruded and you can actually split those fibers to make thinner and thinner legging material. It's the round rubber legs as well as the silicone sheets that have been sliced into thin legs that I find do not split well. Um, what happens is if you take a razor and try to cut these into thinner pieces and then split them apart, it, it just simply breaks into two pieces after not running for very long. You don't get long pieces of thin and flexible legs that are going to improve the action of your fly. So this is how I split the Uniflex material. I placed it on a piece of paper and I uh, have a single edged razor. And the point is you kind of pass the razor through about half thickness through the piece of paper and the material to get it to penetrate. And then you pull. And split. There, we've split it. So this is the uh, long leg stone that I tie with the split pieces of the Uniflex material. It's a recently molted gold stone look. Um, and the other feature of this fly is I tie it with the wing case on the underside of the jig hook. I do this because if you look at the long leg stone, uh, stone tying video, you'll see a clip by, from the cutters video of stoneflies. And in that you'll see that as these stoneflies drift, it's mostly, most of the time the wing case is down. And so on a jig hook, when it inverts in the water, the wing case should be down too on the fly pattern. The other feature of this fly is it's tied with four sets of legs. This is the octo stone version of the long leg stone that I tie. And I do it solely to get more leggy action, more flexibility, more wavy movement in the fly. I also tie a deca stone model with five sets of legs. You're looking at my tank testing equipment, which consists of a, a GoPro camera with a macro lens on it and I'm facing a, a wide-waisted hourglass-shaped vase that sits on a piece of white plastic. And wrapped around this is a paper towels that give me a, both a white background to contrast the fly with as well as cutting glare. Sometimes I'll even wrap it clear around the camera to try and cut the glare. So now we're going to do tank testing of these flies. The first one is going to be Pat Stone tied with the materials I showed early in the video. Um, 
And also following this is going to be an illustration of the tank testing system that I use. So here comes Pat's stone tied with the barred siliflex. Si sexy floss, sorry. We can see that the legs aren't moving that much as we try to bounce it across the bottom like it would in a drifting presentation with a heavy weighted fly like this. Okay, then let's look at one of my designs, the uh, long leg stone with the uniflex legs and it's tied long intentionally to increase the action. And the other thing is I tie my flies with the uh, wing case on the downside of the jig hook because if you look at the uh, cutter videos on stone flies, this, they typically are drifting with the uh, wing case down. But you can see here we're getting significantly more action from this fly and it's quite effective uh, in rivers with golden stones. Finally is my radical pattern, the uh, chain, chain stone, which is quite heavy. Um, because of the chain used for the legging and the tails, as well as the weighting, this fly is designed to get way down in the deep holes that I fish. And it has a, what I call a make and flippy floppy uh, presentation, stealing from the talking head song. As you can see that this thing, the legs are acting to bring it down on the ground and make it stick to the bottom. And then if we jig it as we go, we're gonna get a great action off that and as well as a deep drift. The semi-rigid but flexible legs of the chain stone also seem to act to skip and slide the fly over the rocks and such that it hangs up less while bottom bouncing. I think the legs actually span across some of the cracks and such so the fly does not slide deeply down into the crack and get irretrievably hung up.